Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this picture of, looks like terry cloth, and wanted to know how you could recreate that. And I've kind of recreated it. It's not perfect. I've got some thicker spaces here, but I, for the video, I wasn't taking a lot of time. And also, this this thing's kind of askewed, and, and you know, it's a piece of material. So we're just going to get it close. So the way I would look at that, I'm gonna take this one right here, which is probably the best one, and I'm gonna take the rectangle tool, I'm gonna to make a rectangle. I'm gonna, let me make it black so you can see it maybe a little bit better. Let's make it a little thicker so you can definitely see it. And then I'm gonna round it off. I'm just gonna say five. I don't know how big it is, and that worked perfect. And we're gonna go to about there. We're gonna make it a little bit longer, and you can see it's a skewed because the my shape is perfect and the towel's not, but that's good enough. Then I'm gonna take the rectangle tool. I'm gonna to go from that point to that point to that point, and I'm gonna call that good. I'm gonna hit P, put it in the center of the page. I'm gonna take our other shape and hit P and put it in the center of the page. I can actually take these now, and I'm gonna make this one the same thickness of black just so you can kind of see it going. And I think I used 20 points. And I'm gonna weld these together. Now, I'm gonna convert it back to a hairline because I think it's a little bit easier to uh, see the nodes. We can always convert it back. I'm gonna take the shape tool. And I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna add a shape, or add a node. As you see, it added one up here, we don't need, we don't really have to take it out. I'm gonna put it back on our material, just to kind of get the right shape. And for the video, that's good enough. I mean, if you're doing it for real, you'd wanna take your time. But we're gonna grab that node now that's in the center First of all, let's do this. Let's select them both and right click your mouse and turn it into a curve. You know, we might not want to do that. No, we do not want to do that. We want a straight line. Whoop, I had all of them selected. So we're just going to go out. Plah, sorry about that. get a, basically the basic shape, and then we can select all these, right click and convert them to a curve. Now here's the key, you don't have to do them both the same. We only have to do one right now. So I'm gonna move this off the page, and I am gonna make a duplicate of that guy, and I'm gonna put my round corner right there, and you can see we're pretty far off. So here's kind of the key to match it up. Get your shape tool. Let's bring this one over a little bit. Bring it down. And if you could take your time and do a little bit better job than I'm doing, but you want, basically you want the same distance off the round as you are round. And if you notice, I'm just working on one. I'm actually gonna cut that corner in a little bit. Bring this back out. And for the video, I'm gonna call that good. Now, how do I get the other corners like that? Control D and make a duplicate and mirror it. First of all, I need to mirror it the other way because I want that shape. Let's get this one out of the way. This is the shape I want. Even though it's funny up top, I'm gonna to leave it like that for right now. I'm gonna take the Smart Fill tool, I'm gonna to fill that in. I'm gonna left click, right click, and now I'm gonna control D and make a duplicate. I'm gonna mirror it the other way. I'm gonna bring that node to right there. And you can see we're off somehow. Let me do this again. We're pretty good for the video. Now I'm gonna take these inside lines and delete them. And I'm not caring about the outside lines because I'm gonna use a Smart Fill tool to make my shape. 
And you see what happens sometimes if you have a another shape in, sorry about that, get the pick tool back, get this shape out of the way, because it, it stops the Smart Fill tool from filling. Fill in the Smart Fill tool with blue, whatever, doesn't matter. What color, left click, right click, and now we're gonna make it a thicker line. We're equal now. I'm actually gonna make it 50 point. This will just show you, you don't have to use one of you, one use, use one of the prescribed numbers. And also when you do that, I should have scale with object in case we make it bigger or smaller. Now I'm gonna control D and we're kind of looking at the, the material here and these are pretty far apart, the two touches. So we're gonna control D and make a duplicate and we're gonna to try to set that guy right where it needs to be. Now, once you're happy with that, and I would actually move it down a hair, I can control D again and we'll put it over here this time. That's all that's really to it. And then just keep doing that. Whoop, I don't know how. I hit control D and make a duplicate. And bring that guy in. And just keep repeating that pattern. Just watch your, your spacing. And as the more you make, the more you can make. Because now we're going to go here. Control D. Once you, if you hit it right the first time, you can control D and do a lot of it. Sorry about that. Control D and make a duplicate. And then move the whole thing up here. And you really want to watch your spacing. You can see I'm quite a bit off but I can nudge it. I've got my nudge distance set real low. I need to move over to the left a little bit. Control D and make a duplicate. Well, I'll tell you what, let's erase, let's don't do that. Control D and make a duplicate of the whole thing. What we're trying to do is get a pretty large pattern. Let's look at it. As long as you don't click off of it, you still have the whole thing. We're just gonna move it up a little bit and you could take a lot more time than I'm taking in this. I'm actually off on some of them. Uh, this line right here is too close. But you could, you could do this to your heart's content. Now let's do this. Let's group this. Control G. Let's bring in a rectangle. Make it a little bit smaller. Go right here and go to trim and trimmed out that pattern. That's pretty cool. Now you can see you have some open spots. Click on your item, hold down the shift key and hit the rectangle. That puts a hairline, because I draw a hairline, around my object. There's your pattern. Now you can see that I'm off a little bit, but I would have taken more time. And there's ways to do that with the nudge distance. Uh, let me just do that real quick. The way I might do, let's ungroup this guy. I would take that, and let me just kind of give you a, a hint. Control D and make a duplicate. And let's put this right on top of that node. We've got our nudge distance still fit pretty little get it to it's only like a line. Then set your nudge distance at something you want to nudge it off, like let's go point one. And we're going to move it down and over. So point one didn't work. Let's back up to where we're equal. Let's go point three. I move the right, right arrow button, left arrow button. So if you do that again, Control D and make a duplicate. Put it back on right on top of it. Right button, down button. That way you're equally spaced. Anyway, I hope that answered his question and helped him a little bit. Thank you for watching.